on a Saturday night, we have assembled here to hear some great music, to lift our spirits up so we may worship the Lord and praise the Lord in a new and dynamic way at the genre of jazz. So if you would join me in our call to worship, I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Together, I will tell of your wonders. Together, I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praises to your name, O Most High. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, eternal God, transforming God, amazing God, we thank you for this opportunity you've given us today to come into this sanctuary to bless you and praise you through the genre of jazz. Lord, we know that music makes our hearts ring happy. We know that in the throne room of heaven where you are residing, the angels are constantly singing glory to God in the highest. There's music 24 hours a day, for there is no day in heaven. It's all the time music in heaven, Lord, for you know this soothes our souls and lifts our spirits. So we thank you again for coming here this afternoon to be with us. We ask the Holy Spirit would enter into this place to anoint our hearts, our minds, anoint these great musicians that they come to play for us, that their spirit of improvisation may be anointed by the Holy Spirit. Let everything that has breath this afternoon praise the Lord in this church. So I ask you to sit back, y'all. God, come into our hearts as we are blessed this day by this great music of jazz this afternoon. Praise be to God. I welcome you on behalf of this great church, the Presbyterian Church of St. Albans, the offices and members, to this great jazz vespers. I've been privileged to preach this sermon about mm, six or seven times over the years, and I'm always grateful when Brother Bathory reaches out to me to come to give you the message of God. We ask that you just relax this evening. Here's some good music. I would say that, especially this time of year when we come into the holiday season, I don't feel like it's Christmas so I hear some good music, amen? I heard some good music. The other day I heard the Messiah. I performed the Messiah and the Robert Ray Gospel Mass just last week. So I felt like it was Christmas. Even though I was annoyed by the rehearsals and all the frustrations of dealing with musicians and singers who think they're Leontine Price, it was still a great experience. Somebody say amen. That's part of the journey when, we, when we're musicians. We have to strive and we have to suffer sometimes. Good, amen. I ask you now to sit back Relax, as we are entranced, immersed, baptized in jazz, featuring the Don Hansen Quartet. Let us be blessed. Good afternoon, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming out tonight. We appreciate your presence and uh, we are excited to be here at this time of season. Uh, it's the most wonderful time of the year and Jesus is the reason for the season. So we're happy to be able to uh, exalt his name in, in the music and to share what we have with you. So without further ado, I think you recognize this next one.
Let's hear it one more time for the Don Hansen Quartet. Thank you very much. Uh, we, we, released, we recently released an album entitled Echoes of Light. We'd like to do the uh, title track entitled Echoes of Light.
Here's our power anchor, Miss Joy Hansen.
is another one that you may recognize.
Okay, thank you. How about a hand for Ms. Joy? Okay. All right. Uh, this is this is another one off of our album. I'm sorry about the sound. I didn't want to say anything. Sorry. Uh, this is another one off of the album. It's entitled "He's Right There." problems 
Joy Hansen. She'll be back. Uh, this last piece is uh, another one from the album. It's entitled Dawn of a New Man. Uh, the worst that of any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. So when someone receives Christ in life, you're looking at the dawn of a new man.
This here is once again for the Don Hassan Quartet, y'all. Come on, give it up one more time for the quartet. That don't have you feeling good this evening, something's wrong with you. That doesn't get you excited, ready to receive Christ child in a few days. Something is wrong. Look back and see how great this music was that soothed your soul. You couldn't sit still, amen? Ooh, hallelujah. We're gonna venture tonight just a brief moment to the book of Isaiah. Verses 1 through 5. This is Deuter Isaiah, 2nd Isaiah. This great scripture, very familiar scripture says, Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her. That her warfare has ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough places smooth. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Let us pray. Father God, I ask you to get myself out of my own way this afternoon, Lord, to let the word, your word, speak through me to the people of God. As we explore the anticipation of the Advent season, let us understand what it's meant to do, and let us understand that it's be used for our glorification and for our edification in our life of ministry here on earth. Amen. My brothers and sisters, this scripture is an oracle of comfort to the people of Israel who were exiled due to their sinfulness. What we should observe about this chapter especially is that it took place in the courtroom of heaven where Isaiah and the other prophets were to hear the message from God, amen? But it's interesting to understand that in this time, he was waiting to hear his message, but he was overhearing another conversation that was going on between God and his, and his troop. The passage begins with the Lord of hosts addressing the angels, the Ankhetaj, who are trying to console the Israelites now that their term of punishment is finished. Now you can imagine after you've been in exile for a number of years, you wanna get out of that, amen? The people were anxious and were antsy to be released, much like our kids are in school right now, right? This last week, they couldn't wait to get out of class, amen? And they got home, they drove you crazy, amen? Because they're anticipating this wonderful time of Christmas. However, our lives tend to repeat itself every 20 years. The same situations tend to come along us every 20 years. And these people were not the first time of exile, nor would be their last time of exile. And because of that, they should have been a little used to what was going on, amen? Now think about yourselves. You've encountered the same situation 20 years ago, Aren't you a little ready for it this time when it comes along? You can handle it a little better, amen? If you haven't, you haven't learned anything. Now think about it, 20 years ago, the same, not the same people, but the same situation took place in your life. So this time around, you should be able to sail through it, amen? A lot of times we're not because we don't reflect on what we did in the past, what God has done for us in the past. Let's use our spiritual imagination and just pretend that we're the part of that tribe of Israel that was in exile coming out again. What were they thinking about? Were they thinking about what happened when they left Egypt? Remember, they left Egypt after 44 years of wandering in the wilderness. They finally got to the promised land, amen? They're wondering, but this is going to happen again? But the Lord said, no, it's not. Let their souls be restful before. This time, I'm going to make sure that their entrance is smooth. That's where the uh, scripture talking about making the mountains low and the rough places plain. So their exit from the land from um, where they were coming back into Judah would be smooth, because there was a mountain range between the two, so they couldn't get through it. Now, a lot of times when we read the scriptures, we think, well, that happened how many years ago? It has nothing to do with me. But it, the scripture is contextual, so the idea, the principle of what they were going through can be used in our time, as in our present situation. But however, when we look at our present situation, we have to look through it with a spiritual lens. And that can only be fortified and proven by our spiritual, our prayer life, our abiding time with God. We see something happening, we can't understand it, or we don't want to understand it. That's when we have to go to God in prayer about it. Now let's remember, Isaiah was a prophet who was really concerned with the status of marginalized people in our society. The widows, the orphans, and the sick. Those, as they still are, marginalized portions of our society. But church, I ask you, are we not receiving those who are living in poverty and despair in their, firm, in their former countries? Have we forgotten that we as a nation of immigrants, amen, I'll say it again, that we as a nation of immigrants, 
our ancestors faced some of the same problems we are dealing with now worldwide. Church, God is testing our Christian ethics of compassion and hospitality. Of course, we cannot direct the actions of our elected officials because they do what they want to do and not for the betterment of the people. Somebody say amen. But we can display this compassion and empathy in our own little worlds, in our own little neighborhood. You have new people coming to your community. Somebody say amen. The population has changed in Southeast Queens, hasn't it? Okay, I grew up in a southern black community. It's not that any longer. But it's up to me and my neighbors to welcome those who are coming into the community. It's changing, so we got to change with it, amen? we got to anticipate the change and be grateful and understand that without change, we would become stagnant and die. We have to, we have to embrace the new theologies, the new ideologies, rather, of the people and see how we can merge that into one cohesive unit that we can all live in and journey together. Because we all have the same struggles, church. Whether you were born here, native New York, Iowa, my parents were born in the South, but I had the same struggles they had. Not as, maybe not as intense with the racism. Our racism here is a little more undercover. It's not blatant like it was in the South, Deep South. So we have to learn how to deal with it. And since we have already experienced the issues of immigration, would it not be right for us to advise those who are coming now how to deal with those issues? Could you imagine if you were one of the ones coming from South America right now, got to New York, and you're laying on the street sleeping for the last week or two? How would you feel? You feel really awful. And this city, we don't even know what's going on in our town. When I saw the newscast of the people sleeping on the streets in midtown Manhattan, I didn't know that. I don't go to Manhattan. I work and live in Queens. I was shocked, and I felt really bad for myself to not have the compassion for those who are laying in the street in the rain. As it says in chapter 3 of our scripture, there was a voice that cried in the wilderness. That was the voice of one of the angels that was charging up his troops to go down to earth to lead the Israelites. But it says, let the voice that cries in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. And so if we use our power to rally our troops, rally our families, rally our church communities, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can effect some change. Amen? But saints, as we approach the end of the season of Advent, have you anticipated the coming of Jesus Christ? Has your Advent journey revealed anything to you? Yes, it was a time of preparation, just as Lent is a time of preparation. However, in this dedicated season, we must strive for a deeper connection with God so we can interpret and adapt these sacred scriptures to our daily lives. A church with the stress of the impending Christmas celebration, we get sidetracked. Our greatest mistake is we put our own desires before that of God. Now, you know, we, Christmas is what, Monday? You all finish your shopping? Are you all doing any more shopping? Do you have the money to do any more shopping? Let's be real about some things. This will all produce frustration. So here we are in this moment of anticipation of the glory of God, and all these things are tweaking our anticipation to anxiety. The anxiety leads to frustration. The frustration leads to anger. We need immediately to go to God in prayer when we feel that happening. We know when we're tipping over the side. Amen? I was tipping over the side yesterday really, really, really bad. I had to stop and say, Hale, stop that. There's no reason to go there because this is a minor issue you're having a conniption fit about. Something so minor that it will not affect my life more than the two minutes it was there. So I learned to drop it and thus understand that, yes, God is testing me in this time as we're preparing for his birth, the birth of his son, Jesus Christ. Now think back when you were a child, back in the dark ages, there was still light in the school of electricity around my time. <laughs> the heat was still cold in some places, but you know, um, when we came home to grandparents, because most of us were blessed having our grandparents in our house, amen, or in our lives, or an elderly aunt or uncle, and we would just be full of anxiety, full of issues, full of energy, screaming and running in the house, breaking things, and what would grandmama do? Sometimes she would smack you, sometimes she'd just look at you and sit you down, because they had to deal with the same things they dealt with as a child. Now, how would you handle that? When your child comes home tonight, if you have small children in your house, those who have adult children, we do the same thing. How do you act when they come in? Oh, la, 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 la. sit your and relax. But they're anticipating the coming of Christmas. Maybe not the coming of Jesus Christ, but the coming of those after Christmas sales. Amen. The coming of those coupon sales they're going to have in every store you can imagine. Uh, Pricing stuff lower than, <laughs> higher than it was before Christmas, thinking you're getting a sale. But with all that stress of 
gift buying, preparing the house for visitors. You know when your cousin, your aunts come and live in your house during Christmas holidays? They picking up everything and looking at everything and mumbling about this dust on the coffee table, all that foolishness. And you got to smile and talk about it when they leave. Y'all don't do that? Y'all don't do that? Now, you know you go to somebody's house and look down. Amen? But we have to stop that. All we have to do is take all that energy that we're doing to bring people down and to build them up. Even with the endurance of those long shopping lines, the lines in the grocery store down the aisle, somebody who forgot something and left their cart in the aisle and ran away for 10 times and holding you up, screaming children. We all have to endure that and still stay centered on God. One thing I always say is that don't go to the grocery store after church on Sunday. Worst time to go to the grocery store after church on Sunday because you've got harried mothers with their church hat and their bedroom slippers on dragging three or four kids screaming behind them who don't want to be there, a husband who's in the car waiting to go home and watch a football game, and she got to cook some collard greens and pig feet. Is she not a little stressed out? Aren't you stressed out sometimes? I found myself getting so annoyed this Advent season. It really troubled my heart that I got so annoyed at everything. I asked the God, I asked Lord God to give me an event to, public, to, to produce. I haven't been able to produce a concert in many years because of COVID, because of funding in our churches is not what it used to be. So this time I was asked to do a concert in Brooklyn. We did the Robert Ray Gospel Mass and the Messiah back to back. That's a lot of work. And I began, I got annoyed about halfway through the process because I was going to two or three hour rehearsals a week for eight weeks. That's a lot. I'm not 40 years old anymore. I'm in my later years, so I don't have that energy level. Amen. I got tired after two hours. I still had to get there and then drive home for an hour. So I prayed to God. I said, what are you doing to me, Lord? I didn't ask for this. And he said, yes, you did. You asked me to give you a concert to work on, and I did it. Now it's up to you to deal with the issues of going through this process to make you stronger. I still have a hard time dealing with that because church, sometimes when people get on my nerves, they get on my nerves. And I try not to lash out. I'm doing much better than I did in the past. But sometimes I just had enough. Now, doing one of those three-hour rehearsals twice a week for eight weeks, I got aggravated at one of my professional singers who just knew they knew what I was doing better than I could do it. I can conduct better than you. That's the wrong rhythm. Brother, I hired you to sing. Shut up and sing. Now, I could have gone the other way. Now, that old hell was welling up in me. The old South Jamaica hell was raised on New York Boulevard. The hell that will cut you if you mess with me. And it was so strong, I had to stand there. It prayed out of me because it was right here. And I was getting ready to blast the brother. But I said, you know what? This is not right to this church, to these people, or to myself. First time I'm dealing with them, what kind of image would it be for me to cuss out the man and throw him out the door, which was what I intended to do. But the Lord said, no, don't do that. Swallow it. Sit in it. Understand where they're coming from and where you're coming from, and all you need to do is come together, work, and give me glory, because that's why I got you here in the first place. I had the chance to produce that concert, but it drew up my negative side. But my closest to the Lord allowed me to shut myself down. I heard him saying, don't do that, boy. So I was able to suppress it. But again, I had let my anticipation of the birth of Jesus Christ develop into anger. Anxiety, yeah, a little frustrated. Frustration because I can't get it done. And now just outright anger. I couldn't find a gift for somebody um, on Friday I was looking. I got so mad because I waited too long to buy the gift for him. And I went to five different stores in an hour. I said, you know what, baby, you're not getting this this Christmas. <laughs> I love you, but I'm not going to waste another hour looking for something I probably will not find. The anxiety and frustration is not what God intends us to do. In the moments of our anxiety and frustration, we realize God has a plan for us to work out. His plan, not ours. And so sometimes when we're working long and doing our projects, do whatever in life, we put our own desires for the end result in front of what God has desired for us to do. That's very easy to do. You can convince yourself that your plan is right and God's plan is not. Because what, it feeds your flesh so you feel really good about it. That's not what God wanted. He may let you do what you, what you have in plan, but it'll fail. It won't get the result that you want because it's not what God wanted us to do. So church, during this Advent season, God provides many opportunities for humankind to gain greater and easier access to him. All we got to do is pray, church. 
Now, praying is not falling down in the middle of the floor for an hour screaming and rolling on the ground. Praying is just like, Lord, help me. Jesus, help me. I pray the most on the bus and the subway. But all them crazy folk, I have to say, Lord, help me. I saw a man beating his wife, holding a baby in their arms the other day. I'm like, Lord, help me. Should I intervene? No, the man might have killed me. I don't know what to do, so we called the police to help them out. But when you see this kind of stuff, you got to deal with it every day. It's, it's distressing, but God just shows me. All right, you, I put you here to see that issue for you to be stronger in me. So just go and sit down and pray for the person, which I did. But church, I understand I cannot sleep on this process. God gave us this time of Advent for a reason to reflect, pray, and meditate so we can realize his awesome power. God will do things in your life that you think are small. He'll move a mountain, and you don't know what's being moved. Or you know what the solution is there for you. How it got there, that was from God and God only. Just like the Israelites church, we may have to go through hell and high water before we realize that we are being blessed. Did you ever not realize your blessing? Nobody, you ever re- overlooked a blessing and didn't realize it? I had an issue when the church I used to be at years ago that I wanted something done. I wanted, I wanted a raise, actually. And they hired somebody else. I'm like, well, how can you hire him and not give me a raise? I should be making the most money because I'm the head of the department. You know how we think. And I stressed, I called a meeting with the pastor and the board and everybody. And the night before the meeting, I was just stressing and talking to myself. What am I going to tell them in that meeting? I'm going to tell them I deserve all this money. And the Lord said, go to sleep. And when I laid my head down, he goes, the problem is already solved. You and your idiotic attitude missed the blessing I already gave you because they already approved your raise six weeks ago. But you're running your mouth trying to be so, ah, you missed your blessings. I learned at that time, back up. God will work out every issue in our life without our help. He don't need our help. He's got it all in command, and he's going to have his way in the end anyway. This is how the master teaches us the values and actions that are necessary to develop our character and to reach the goals that he has set up, set for us. But church, I ask you a question. Are you ready for the coming of God? Are you ready to celebrate this divine mystery of our faith? This immaculate conception and birth of the Savior. That is so abstract. Have you thought about that? An angel came down and impregnated a virgin and bore the Savior. That's kind of abstract. Somebody agree with me now. It's a little abstract. We know God is miraculous, but that's a, a little of an abstract policy to understand. But still, when we understand that it's miraculous, it's the immaculate conception. It's the divine mystery. We don't have to solve a mystery, amen? It's God's mystery. We just have to accept it and have faith in it. Have you used this Advent time to get closer to God, church? We anticipate the birth of Jesus. What else do we anticipate? Because when we anticipate, sometimes, again, we change what God intends for us to do. We hope for something else. But if we sit here and we, in this time we can pray, and I always talk about prayer. People say you pray too much, but no, you don't. Prayer is just something that opens that line of communi- communication between you and God. He asks that we pray from your heart. Simply, no great, great orations, just thank you, Lord. Amen. Something simple. God will hear your prayer. He hears the prayers of the people. So in this time, church, this Advent time, I ask you, we'll have one more day left to Advent. Monday is Christmas. We're, the season changes on Mondays. Not now. We're not Christmas. We're still in Advent. Thank the Lord for the Advent journey. Thank him for what he has done. And then think back to what he did for you in this time period. Did he, did he heal, your, heal your disease? Did he get your doctor's appointment there you haven't been able to get to in six months? Was your bills paid? Now, that's the major thing. Your, are your bills being paid every month? Might not have $10,000 in the bank afterwards, but your bills are paid. That's a miraculous. You got food on your table? That's a miraculous. I went to the store yesterday. I'm going to sit down after this. I went to the store yesterday because my family has all moved to Florida. So I'm here by myself now, just me and a couple of cousins in Harlem, which I don't see that often. I left here. And I wanted to have a special dinner for Hale. So I went to buy myself a prime rib roast out of Stop a Shop. <laughs> the cheapest cut was $55. And I'm like, really? Then the Lord said, you deserve it. It's not going to break your budget. Buy that and eat it and give me glory while you're cooking and eating it. So I bought it. I ain't going to buy nothing else the rest of the week, but I never bought that piece of meat. <laughs> It's those simple things that God blesses us with, church. The simple things. I was able to buy that. 
a couple of weeks ago, I didn't have the money to buy that. But I was able to buy it yesterday and still put gas in my car. What a blessing. It's a blessing I can get up and tie my shoes in the morning. It's a blessing I can breathe. And now we've been through a lot of things in our lives. I don't know about y'all, but my life has not been a crystal stair. It's been ups and downs. I learned how good God is in the worst times. Amen? I remember one time I got very, I was very, very ill. Very, very, about 20 years ago, very ill. And the Lord had told me to leave something. He said, shut the door for me in my life. And he said, you time to go. No, I'm not going. I like it here. I'm going to stay right here in the midst of this. I did. About three months later, the Lord shut it down. I was in church on Sunday morning leading worship. Wednesday, I was in a wheelchair. That's because at the whole time, the Lord said, you are disobedient. You did not listen to me. And through those dark times, about six months of getting better, he kept telling me, you need to listen to me next time. Do what I tell you to do. I'll never forget, I was in a nursing home and couldn't walk at that time. I was in a wheelchair. And he said, you need to play these chapel services. So they rolled me up to the piano in the chapel. I could hardly sit up. But the Lord said, play this service. Okay, Lord. And my feebleness, I was able to do it. But that's because God was there. He's with us, church, in our darkest hours. He's with us. We can anticipate that God will always be there for us. It's proven in how we live. If you look back over your life, church, you see where God has come in your times. He's coming to help you. Remember those times where God is there for you, and he'll be there again. But acknowledge his ways that he has done. Acknowledge where he is now and acknowledge our inadequacies. We all come together, together in this Advent season, proclaiming the coming of Christ. The first coming of Christ. He's going to come again. But the first coming, we're anticipating this in all this abstract nature and all the glory and things we kind of blow up about it, trying to anticipate uh, Santa Claus with all this narrative, and he ain't there. Amen. 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 Sometime examine the history of how Christmas got to the place where it is now. Jesus was born in the summertime. Amen. Read the, the scripture tells you he was born in the summertime, not in the winter. There's no snow in the desert, is there? The wise men took three months to find the baby, not overnight. So this process just enjoy the process. I always often think about how the wise men felt when they were out walking. They saw the star. They knew what it was about. But you're walking for three months. You're coming across your homeboys along the way. And the three of you come together in a foreign land. And how did you walk to Egypt? Where did you come from? If you came from Africa, you had to swim, didn't you? <laughs> but this, it's just miraculous to understand how God can do things and does things and then makes us for our betterment. So as I close... Advent season is not just four weeks before Christmas where we celebrate different colors and different words. Advent is a time of preparation. The music we're hearing tonight prepares us for God's glory and coming and for tomorrow morning when we all go to church to celebrate his life. So I ask you to take this time, what is left of it, go forward in prayer. Stay in prayer. All the stuff going on in church right now, we got to pray. It's just so, to the point where I don't like to go out at night because I'm that age, I'm a little afraid. I'll be honest. At 66, I have to think twice about going out at night. Look over my shoulder when I go into the house. Leave all the lights on in the house so I don't you know, walk into a dark house. But I thank God that even in the midst of my anguish and my fright, he's still there. He's telling me, it's all right, go on. And when he's, one day he says, don't go there, I don't go there. No matter how much I wanted to, amen? There was a party the other night I wanted to go to. He said, no, you don't. Stick, keep your behind in your house. Have no business going down in Brooklyn where you don't know where you're going to start with. Ten years ago, I would have gone. But I know now, disobedience leads to failure. And if you love the Lord, you will obey God and his commandments. You will pray to hear his voice and discern the true voice of God, not the voice of the others that are speaking to you. So, church, I command you to stay in prayer. Stay fasting. Sit and quietly and listen to the voice of God. During this Advent time, there was plenty of time of silence in our lives, right? Just sit and hear what God says to you. You'll hear something. It won't, may not be a voice, but you'll hear in your spirit what God wants you to do, and you'll connect closer to him. So again, church, stay in Advent mode of time for prayer, time for fasting, a time for abiding, and a time for getting closer and closer and closer to our Heavenly Savior. Be blessed. It makes sense to look at this, doesn't it? Okay, we're going to celebrate our...
Holy Communion, the Last Supper of the Lord. I believe everybody has gotten their elements. Okay. Christ's death until he comes again. Together, if we can say the peace together, please. Grant, O Lord, by the Holy Spirit, that the bread we break and the cup we share may be for us a means of grace, that receiving them we may be made one with Christ and he with us, and remain faithful members of his body until we feast with him anew in his kingdom. Again in unison, O Lord, most holy, as we prepare to celebrate this meal with you, forgive us for our sins of, com of commission and omission against you, against our family or anyone we have had strife with. We truly repent and are thankful for your cleansing grace as we break bread together as a Christian family. And let us say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, and Jesus said, this is my blood for the covenant which has been poured out for many. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. May we take of the bread. May we drink of the cup. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we thank you for allowing us to commune with you and one another. Most gracious God, we thank you for the saving and delivering and healing power we've experienced at your table. Amen. Amen. Church, you know the work of God requires funding in times and times. We're asking tonight for an offering will help offset the cost of this event, and just for the general expense of being ministers of the gospel. We know that we love musicians, and we love the people who work in the church, but everybody's got to eat, amen? Amen? So we ask you to give from your hearts this morning, um, this evening, rather. We do have a suggested donation on the bulletin, but give as your heart so desires. We ask that you stand and come around this side come around and this side come around to the center table if you have an offering for us and just drop it in the basket. Can we have a little bit of music as we do this? We can begin in the back and just come down the aisle and drop in the basket. For the Lord loveth the cheerful giver.
Lord, please accept this offering that was given with the intention of elevating and expanding the work of your kingdom here on earth. Bless those who gave and bless those who could not give, for we all do the same thing, which all come together in heart, mind, finances, to give you glory, honor, and edification. We pray these things through the Father, and through the Son, and through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We thank you for coming out this evening, a great event with great musicians. One more time for the, for the quartet. I enjoy watching jazz performers because they get into it so deeply. My brother bass player's got me going. <laughs> he's, got the, he's got the spirit up in here. And this is the great thing about jazz because it's so improvisational. What they play tonight, they probably will not play exactly the same way again. That's the nature of jazz. It's unique, it's new, and it's always fresh. We're going to have a few words from our chairman. Thank you, Minister Thompson. Uh, my name is Richard Braithwaite. I'm the coordinator of Jazz Vespers Services here at the Presbyterian Church of St. Albans. And please give the uh, Don Hansen Quintet a round, another round of applause. And I want to thank everybody for coming out. Uh, we do this, those of you who don't know, we do this um, every, every fourth Saturday of the month from September through February. And so the next one we will have will be on Saturday, January 27th at 5 p.m. right here again. And the artist will be Ray Blue, another saxophonist who's an excellent player, just like uh, Don Hansen and his group. And so also I just want to mention that those of you who are listening um, online, Facebook, YouTube, you can also contribute by going to P. C-S-A finance at gmail.com. That's P-C-S-A finance at gmail.com. So right now we're going to uh, end with a postlude, one more tune from the Don Hansen uh, Quintet. And thank you very much, Don. Appreciate it. Check. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for having us, Pastor. Thank you, Brother Richard, for coordinating and having us. We appreciate your uh, having us tonight. Thank you so much. And um, before we do this last piece, I thought it'd be appropriate to let you know who's been playing for you this evening. How about a hand for Mr. Julius Chen from Brooklyn, New York. Julius. <laughs> uh, from Queens, New York, Mr. Don Hanson II on bass. We're related. From the Windy City, Chicago, Mr. Reggie Nicholson on drums. And from Queens, New York, Joy Hansen on vocals. How, would you come, would you come, Joy? And I'm Don Hansen, thank you very much. I'm originally from the Bronx. And so are you. <laughs> Uh, I want to thank you all for coming out to see some of my friends from Hempstead, my friend from the Bronx, and other friends from, and people from everywhere. Thank you so much for coming out. We appreciate you so much. Um, okay. Uh, so this this last piece is a jazz standard, and um, it's we I just put some different lyrics to it. It's like an open letter from the Heavenly Father to us.
can only give you love that lasts forever. And I promise to be there if you should call. But to enter in this way, all you have to do is pray. That's all. That's all. You will never be alone again. Oh, never. I'll be there to pick you up if you should fall. Take my yoke and learn of me, for the truth is all you see. That's all, that's all. There are those, I am sure, who have told you that it's God who's the problem today. But you know selfish motives Addictions, crime and murder have never been a part of my way. So you see, it's people, people who make problems. And it's people who I use to heal them all. But abundant life can be yours for all eternity. That's all. That's all. Thank you all so much. God bless you all. Get home safe. Thank you once again for coming. We have CDs also. Uh, they're $10. If you want to gift anyone, the second one is 5 So one for 10 two for 15 three for 20 uh, But um, if you want, give the gift of music. But God bless you. Thank you so much for coming out. And enjoy celebrating the birth of Christ on Monday.